Hallelujah. Glory. What's cracking, Jordan? Man, I just like watching that video. It is, it just blesses my soul. How y'all doing? All right. Can we give it up for Sarah, y'all? Representing. Hallelujah. Can we give it up for the worship team? They are awesome. Um, as we get ready to rock and roll, get in the word, I'm Damien, um, and I get to, I get the honor and the privilege of serving as the pastor here at the Jordan, one of the awesome pastors here at the Jordan. So it's an honor and a privilege to be here. I'm still getting to know names and seeing faces and stuff like that. So come up to a brother, say what's up a little bit later. Um, I'll be rocking around and I just, I just want to meet as many of you as I can, but you can't judge me if I forget your name in two seconds. Amen. Pinky promise. All right, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, here's, I want to just, I just want to revisit a moment in worship that I really felt um, that God really was speaking to my heart about this. And I just want to, I, I, I feel like tonight, I just want to give people permission to just be real tonight. Just, just this, and that might just be me talking to me, and I received that, hallelujah. It might just be me talking to me, but it's just, it just felt like an opportunity not to just come in here and just be business as usual, but it just seems like this week has been heavy for so many in so many ways. Seems like it's just been one thing after another, or maybe just some transitional things, and, and, and it's just been a little hard sometimes. So I just felt like, I just, I just want to give us in this space tonight permission to just be real with God, to just be open with the Holy Spirit, and say, King of kings, Lord of lords, I don't have it together, but you do. King of kings, Lord of lords, I, I, I feel like I have to seem like I have it together, but I want to give you permission to invade these areas where I'm struggling. So, Spirit of God, will you have your way? Spirit of God, will you just make me open to you in ways that, that I've been closed off in this season? Spirit of God, we need you. 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 So King of kings and Lord of lords, wherever we find ourselves tonight, we thank you that we do not find ourselves in that space alone. So we thank you for your word that tells us you are a very present help in the time of need. So family, be encouraged wherever you have a need that is the bat signal for the presence of God. Amen? Amen. It's not the bat signal for the presence of you and you trying to figure it out and you panic. And anybody, you panic a little bit when it's time to, when you're like, okay, how do I do this? You panic. Okay, it's just me. We got a few honest. Okay, some of y'all struggling with lying right now, but that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Safe space. Safe space. But I just want to encourage you in just letting God in, in every space. Is that cool? All right, hallelujah. Let's go. Let's get into the word. Y'all ready? It's week three. It's week three of this journey of life in the name of Jesus, life in his name. And we are in the book of John, week three. We are in chapter two. Anybody been reading along in the book of John with us a little bit? Yeah, a few of us? They're like, mm -mm, nah, man. When I get here Thursday, that's when I'm reading, okay? Don't do too much, Damien. Don't do too much. Understand it. It's all good. It's all good. If this is your first time joining us, we are um, in the middle of a series where we're going through the book of John, and um, we are talking about this idea of John and, and just the fact that we're called to have life in his name. Life in his name, life in the name of Jesus. And um, just a little setup for us. I love the book of John because it just keeps it 100. It tells us just what it is all about. And in John chapter 20, it says this. It says, verse 30, it says, The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. 
But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. Life in his name. Say, life in his name. name. Say it again, "Life life in his name. Life in his name. Life in his name. I know for some of us it's hard to say that because it's like life has been drained, right? Like life has been drained. And that's why we're coming here to reconnect to the source. Like Sarah said, living water inside of us, flowing in us and through us. And this idea that John is talking about when he's writing this gospel is one of the main words. Okay, let me see see if y'all remember. What's one of the main words in the book of John? Ooh, truly, I remember, somebody remember truly, truly. What's the big, what's the word that's used 96 times? What is it? What is it? What is it? believe. Okay, you ready. You ready. You get, I'm going to stamp your card, but as soon as you got to sign up to serve on a team. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe. Believe is used 96 times. 96 times in the book of John. And what John wants us as the readers of this book, what he wants us to know is that Jesus is worth believing in. Jesus is worth putting our belief in. And whenever you believe in something, you have to understand that your belief is action-oriented in this book. It means this, that your belief is not just a moment in time or a crisis situation. How many of you know when crisis strike, it's like, I ain't got nobody else but Jesus. Okay, Jesus, I'm about to pray. I haven't prayed in six years, but right now I'm about to pray every prayer I know how to pray. Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. That's a crisis, right? That's a crisis. But what John is saying, he's not encouraging us to have a crisis of faith. He's writing this book that we would believe so that we can continue to have faith. And here's what's bananas, y'all. Here's what's bananas. When you start getting into a book like this, when you start diving into the book of John the way we're diving into the book of John, understand this, all hell might break loose in your life. All hell might break loose in our ministry. What does that mean? That means the enemy is going to try to come in. And the Old Testament says this, when the enemy comes in, the Bible says, like a flood, the Lord raises a standard against it. So when the enemy tries to come in and attack in your relationships, when the enemy tries to come in and attack you on your job, when the enemy tries to come in and make you seem like you can't or God cannot do it in you and through you, can I just tell you that the standard of God's word is being raised on your behalf right now, but we can believe, amen? Hey, we have to step towards that thing and believe. There is nothing too difficult. There is nothing too impossible for our God. Hey, I get excited because I need to hear that. I need to hear that. So I get excited about that. So what John is telling us is he's setting up the case to show us that Jesus is worth your belief. Oh, it might be hard to believe sometime because you're struggling with something or you have this cycle or this pattern or just mentally things have been challenging and it might be hard. John's like, it's worth believing. Take a step towards Jesus. And we find ourselves in John chapter 2. So if you, if you have your Bible, go to John chapter 2. And we find ourselves in the midst of a party. Come on, somebody. One of my favorite things to do is I love to officiate weddings. Mm-mm, oh, it's so fun. It's so fun. You know why it's so fun for me? Because people don't be expecting the officiant, the pastor, to drop it like it's hot. <laughs> they don't be expecting it. I'll be on the dance floor and be like, oh, why, why? Shut it got down. No time to get me. Yeah, yeah. I'll be grooving. And they'll be like, is that the pastor? Okay, pastor. Like that, like that's what happens. It's bananas. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's great. I've had people ask my wife things about me. When, me, when, my wife, when we're at a, at a wedding, people walk up and be like, does he, does he really know the Lord? 
Sometimes he does. Sometimes he does. I love, I love weddings. I love being at weddings. They just have, they, it's, it's so much fun to be able to officiate them, to be able to, to dance at them and just celebrate God bringing two people together. It's a beautiful thing. And that's where we find ourselves right here in John chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 1, and I'm going to read through the whole chapter, and then we're going to, we're going to talk about three aspects that we see about Jesus in this, in this chapter. And remember, as we're going through these scriptures, as we're looking at the Word, John is setting the case that Jesus is the God-man, he's all God, all man, and we need to place our faith and belief in him on a continuous basis. John chapter 2, verse 1, it says this, The next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. Jesus goes to parties. Come on, somebody. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him they have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. Yeah, I know, that's funny. I laugh at that too because I just think about saying that to my mama. I probably would have immediately been picking myself up off the floor. Like, you know, dear woman, that's not my... <laughs> uh, where the wine at? Uh, where, where, uh, somebody, go, go to the liquor store real quick. Like that? That would have been my reality. Verse 5, but his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars have been filled, he said, now dip, out, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, the servants knew, the servants knew, the servants knew. Look at the person next to you and say, the servants knew. Look at the person on the other side and say, the servants knew. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Who knew? Oh, okay, y'all good, y'all good, y'all good. So the servants knew. He called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. After the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. Going into verse 13, Jesus clears the temple. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. So Jesus went to Jerusalem in the temple area. He saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers' coins over the floor, and turned over their tables. Then going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Then his disciples remembered this prophecy from the scriptures, passion for God's house will consume you. But the Jewish leaders demanded, what are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a, a miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus replied, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. What? They exclaimed. It has taken 46 years to build the temple and you can rebuild it in three days? When Jesus said, the, this temple, he meant his own body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus has said. Verse 23, because of the miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many began to trust in him. But Jesus didn't trust them because he knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew what was in each person's heart. That's God's word for us tonight. And the first thing I want us to notice is right at the beginning, 
We talked about it a little bit. We are at a party. We are at a party. We are at a wedding. And I just believe from this whole chapter there's three things. And I'm going to give you those three things, and then we're going to kind of break those three things down a little bit. The first thing is I believe Jesus will party with us. And I'm going to explain that in just a few moments. Three things. He'll party with us. If you take notes, write that down. He'll party with us. He'll fight for you, and he'll feel you. He'll party with you, fight for you, and feel you. And here's what I mean by party with you. Uh, You could probably take party out and put partner in there. He'll partner with you. He'll partner with you. With you, And this is a great setup because we see it in the, in the first chapter of John. We see this divine partnership. I do like to call it a party because I love when I get the opportunity in my broken state to partner with a, the, the living God, the Holy Spirit. And, I, and, and he uses me and does things in me and through me. And I'm like, dang, God, thank you so much. Like, so it's like to me, that's like, let's, let's go. That's a party. You know what I'm saying? So it's a party, but it's, it's a partnership. He partners with you and I. We see it with John the Baptist, and we see it at this party with the servants. We see it at this party with the servants. And, 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 and when we partner with Jesus, or when Jesus partners with us, or the Holy Spirit partners with us, we're in proximity to the Holy Spirit. We're in proximity to God. And what I want to say is, is Our faith is a faith of proximity to God. And and here's here's what I mean by this. We jump back into chapter 1 where it says the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. The word Jesus, he put on flesh and he started to walk in what we walk in. He wants to partner with us. He moved into the neighborhood. Our faith is all about proximity to Jesus, proximity to God. Our faith is all about closeness, relationship. And we see that. What does sin do? Sin comes in. In the beginning, sin came in. And what did it do? It separated us from God. It comes in and separates. And Jesus God sending Jesus is all about bringing us close so that we can be in proximity to the Lord, that we can be close to the Lord, growing closer to Jesus. And I love this because we see this proximity. We see this closeness as Jesus, he has his disciples, he's rolling with his crew. And I I love his mom Because his mom just is like, this is the mom card. Hey, baby, come on. Come on, baby. I know. I know. They need some wine. They need some wine. And here's the thing. There was so much disgrace, like a wedding celebration. Like we just, we we have a wedding now, and it's like we stress out for what a year, two years, however long it takes for the engagement to go. We stress out, and then we get to the day of, and then we're like, whoa, let's go, let's go. And then right after that, we're like, (laughs) right? All right, y'all go home. I just, I, we, we out, leave us alone, right? Leave us alone, we about to go honey. But what happens in this time, like the celebration would be a couple weeks, y'all. Like this is a big, weddings are a big deal culturally here. They are partying, they are getting their groove on. It's not just one night and we out. It's like, no, nah, family coming in, they got all the camels, they got everything packed up. We are in the house. That's what's happening. So if you run out of wine during this celebration, it just looks really bad on you, your family, and it's just a really shameful thing. There's a lot of shame that comes with that. And it's pretty dope that the first miracle recorded, Jesus is transforming something so that his people don't have to feel the shame. Ah. Oh. I just believe that's a word from the Holy Spirit right there. And it might just be for me because I struggle with shame. I struggle with shame a lot. I don't, let, I don't like letting people down. I don't like, I, I, I have struggles that I have and I struggle with shame so often. And I'm just so blessed and thankful that Jesus comes in and even though he says, it's not my time to reveal who I am to the world just yet, He listens to his mama. Come on, somebody. 
That's a word. Listen to your mama. Amen. Amen. I listen to my mama. She ain't whooping me. I'm a grown man. Okay? I'm a pastor. You can't whoop me. My mama don't care. She will whoop me in front of y'all. Y'all be like, why your mama hitting you like that? Just look away. Just look away. She actually loves me. Bobby, I love you. I don't know if you go watch this, but uh, proximity. <laughs> Jesus comes in and he deals with, and he, and he helps right there. And, 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 and I love, I love uh, mom's request, Mary's request, because in, in verse 2 she says, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out, and she says, they have no more wine and Jesus, dear woman, don't, that's not my problem. My time has not yet come. And then she simply says, do whatever he tells you. And in studying this out, it's very interesting because Mary's request of Jesus is made to him as if it were a prayer. It's very, it's, it's crazy. When I, when I just studying this out, I was like, oh my goodness. That's, that's bananas to me. It, it wasn't, it, it was, it was like, She's presenting a need. There is a need here. Jesus, will you help? Will you help in this place? There is a need here. Will you have compassion? There is a need here. Will you do what only you can do? And even though Jesus is like, it's not my time, he still steps in and he does it. And she says, do whatever he says. That's a faith in G. Like, she, she just do whatever he says because there's something he can do in this situation. Now, you take that request and it's like a prayer, and then you go all the way to the bottom of that chapter and you get the Pharisees. And the Pharisees, how did they request a miracle from Jesus? They're like, who do you think you are? If you, you telling us what to do, you better do a miracle right now, bruh. Do a miracle. They demand proof. They demand, they're not praying, they're demanding. They demand, you better do what we, t- this, like, like Mary, she's like, there is a need here. And it's for these people. And the Pharisee is like, I need you to prove to me why you doing what you're doing. And here's what's bananas, y'all. The Pharisees are the ones that know the word. So they are the ones that were so well versed in the Bible, they should have been able to see the prophecies that Jesus was fulfilling as he was fulfilling them. What does that tell me? It tells me that knowledge does not equate close proximity. They knew a whole lot about the prophecies. They knew a whole lot about what should be happening. And earlier in, that, in, the, in, the, in the scriptures there, you see the disciples are like, oh, we remember. We remember the scriptures that's being fulfilled where it says, zeal for my house will consume you. And, and, and they're like, oh, wow, that prophecy is fulfilled in Jesus right now when the ones who knew the word of God inside and out, they looked like they were close to the Lord. They looked like it. And that's why I just believe God's giving us permission to not, tonight to not look like we know the Lord, but to just surrender it all and step in and give him all that we are so that we can just be honest with him. And he can meet us with compassion in those places. So when we're in close proximity, we pray. When we're in close proximity, we pray. The Pharisees demanded, but Jesus or or, or, or Mary, she, 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 she prayed. And can I just tell you this? We have a dope prayer team. Mm -hmm. Team fair. Let's go. Team fair. We do. We have a dope prayer team. And I believe some of you are maybe called to be people of prayer. And it's not about saying big words. It's just about bringing your mustard seed of faith to the party. Just bringing your mustard seed to the party. This is a a room where mustard seeds are welcome. Hey, come on. 
You don't have to have this huge amount of faith because Jesus, the Bible, it says it don't take all that. It just takes a mustard seed to move a mountain. And if you ain't got a mustard seed, we got some people sitting down that will, have, that will loan you their mustard seed. Like, look, this is all I got. I just got one. Actually, I got two mustard seeds. You take one, I take one. Let's pray. That's what we are. That's what we do. That's what this space is about. That's where we're going. I want to encourage you in that. I want to encourage you in the mustard seed of faith that you may be carrying. Because here's the thing. There is, who, okay, okay, quick review. Quick review. I get excited. I got to calm down. Who were the ones that witnessed the miracle first? Wait, okay, we got to say a little bit better than that. Who were the ones that witnessed the miracle first? Oh, let's say it again. Who were the ones that witnessed the miracle first? The servants witnessed the miracle first. Everyone else was like, dang, that's some good wine, turn up. <laughs> right? But the servants, the, they, were, they were in close proximity. And, and, and so they were the ones who were just doing their normal job. They showed up and they were in the room where it happened. <laughs> they were in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. We're dumb. They were there though. They were there. They were in the space. They were in the room. They were serving and they, they, they showed up. I bet you somebody didn't want to show up to that party. I bet you there was someone that they like, this is my fourth wedding. I don't want to be here. Michelle, do you want to be here? No. Billy, you want to be here? No, I don't want to be here. Look, let's just, let's rebel and not be here. Well, Jesus, he, gonna, he told us to fill this up with water. This is dumb. Water. This is, this is stupid. Let me get to this. Oh, go ahead. Michelle. Oh, Michelle. I might be drunk. Smell that. Smell that, Michelle. Is that, is that, is, is that what I think it is? It is. No, I don't know if that's just maybe the way the Bible comes to life in my mind. Pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. But it's, it's like, like, like they probably didn't want to show up to do the job. They didn't want to show up to, to like, like how I, I didn't want to show up to move a chair. I didn't want to show up to set this up. I didn't want to show up to do all of these things. But can I tell you, there is miraculous in the mundane. Cool. There is miraculous in the mundane. What does that mean? That means when you show up to that thing that is not exciting, when you show up to that thing that is not fun, there is a, there is a miracle there. That's what we see right there. We see the miracle. We see this miracle that is, we see, they, they get to be a part of the miracle. Come on. Oh, come on. Michelle and Billy are freaking out after that. And they just sitting back watching like, dang, they about to get turned up in here because Jesus did it. Jesus did it. Now, there's debate if it was like a fruit wine or if it was a highly, uh, you know, <laughs> eh, it's a different thing. Different thing, different time. But it was, it, 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 it's bananas. And, and I just, I, I say that because when we say yes to Jesus and we serve, like, that is the space where you, see, you may not even know where to serve God. You may not even know what your giftings are. And I'm here to tell you tonight, like, as you take steps and you just believe, and you just believe, like, this is what God is supposed to do. This is what I'm supposed to do in response to the love of Jesus in my life. When you take those steps, God meets you right there. See, I discover. I just, I, I just was radically saved by the Lord. And, and if you know me, as you're getting to know me, if I'm excited about something, I tell everybody about it. 
I do. I tell, I tell everybody about it. I, you know, I love the Dodgers, so Dodgers. I love the Dallas Cowboys. I know, I know. That you, it, you cannot get up and walk out right now, okay? You can't do that. You can't do that. I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. I'm a, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. I love Dallas Cowboys. I love, that, I love me some strawberry ice cream. Hallelujah. I do, I do, I do. I do. I love these things. There's just different things that I just absolutely adore. I, I, I adore them. And so I let people know that. I let people know. And so when, when I got radically saved by Jesus, I was like, I just got to serve him. That's it, that, like that. I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just got to serve him. I didn't know that I was called to speak. I didn't know how to be a pastor. I just knew that Jesus did something for me that I needed him to do, and no one else can do it. The biggest thing that I discovered about the Lord is his love for me. I was like, bro, do you know me? Do you know, do you, do you know the sins that I just got done like living in? and loving and enjoying. I was just there. And you still love me? You still love me? How? I don't understand. And the more and more he showed me his love, the more I was like, I got to give my life to you. And so in my belief, I have to take steps. And I learned so much about God by volunteering in my junior high ministry, setting up chairs to all my junior high leaders. Woo woo, woo woo, okay? Chair team, woo-woo, woo-woo. I, that, that's where I learned. That's where I learned. And, and I thought I was going to serve the Lord in junior high. Ooh, I thought I was going to serve the Lord in junior high ministry forever. Thank you, Fabi. I thought I was going to serve the Lord in junior high ministry forever. And even when my pastors were like, look, man, we see, we see a gift inside of you. And we, we would like for you to come on staff and, you know, just... Lead our children's ministry. Just come on, bless us, brother. <laughs> bless us, brethren. I was like, no, junior high chairs, fool. It was very weird. It was very weird. One of the pastors had to take me aside and be like, look, buddy, <laughs> just accept the position and we'll see what we can do with getting you in junior high as well. Like, I literally, like, because I was like, this is what I'm called to do. I'm called to move chairs. I'm called to set up this, I'm called to set up this room for junior hires and their musty selves. Let's go. When you say yes to Jesus, he reveals things to you that he's placed inside of you that you didn't know was there. When you're in proximity, when you're in close proximity to the king, he slowly but surely decreases your desire for this kingdom and gives you a desire for his kingdom to come. He slowly but surely gives you a desire for you to decrease so that he can then increase. He partners with us. He partners with us. There is a miracle in the mundane. And in this partnership, three things for you to do. Surrender. That's been a word for today. Somebody, surrender. What does that mean? Just give up your own way. Give up your own way. I give up how, I, I, I give up, or, 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 or it's not even about if you have a plan. Plans are great, but taking that plan, and in this next word, surrender, submit. Submit that plan under the authority of God. Have a plan, have an idea, have thoughts, have dreams, but surrender them to God and then submit under his authority. His mom said, do what he tells you to do. And even if it seems crazy, even if it seems crazy, you can't go wrong trusting God. You can't go wrong trusting Jesus. Surrender, submit, and obey. Surrender, submit, and obey. Um, our faith is a transformational faith, not a transactional faith. And here's what's bananas. I think some of us, I think some of us, we settle for a transactional faith when it's supposed to be transformational so what do we do? We show up, a clock in, clock out, hands up, hands down, feet up, feet, I don't know, right? We, we, we clock in, heard the word, boom, did this, clock in, clock in, clock in, clock in, clock in. That's transactional. When I was in junior high, there was a, I don't know why I'm on junior high right now. I love junior high. 
But when I was in junior high, one of the dopest things that happened at our junior high school was we got Taco Bell burritos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were the bomb. Can't mess around with it now. But back then, junior high, stomach of steel. Roar! Right? So, so weird. I'm so weird. So, so... So it, it, it was a beautiful thing. They had these burritos, and it was rice and chicken in it, and it was like, mm, I don't really know what, it, what was really all in it, but if it had Taco Bell on the wrapper, it was bomb to me. And there was a dude, we'll, we'll, call, the, we'll, we'll call him Taco Bell Burrito Dude. This dude, he would come up to me weekly, and um, he'd be like, hey, what's up, Daniel? What's cracking, man? How you doing, man? What's up, what's up, what's up? I'd be like, what's up, man? How you doing, dude? He's like, yeah, bro, uh, you think you could buy me a, a burrito, man? Like, yeah, I get you a burrito. Come on, man. You know, let's go. Get you, get your burrito on. Cheers, burrito. Leave. He he just leaves. Next day, hey, you dirty. What's up, boy? You good? Let me get. Did you give me a burrito? What you thinking, man? Give me. Get a brother a Taco Bell burrito. I'm like, man, come on. You're my Taco Bell burrito friend now. Let's do this. You know, I'll, I'll partner with you. Let's do this. I got you. Every day almost, three, four times a week, this dude, can you give me a burrito? Can you give me a burrito? Can you give me a burrito? I'm like, bro, do you know my name still? Because you keep asking me for a burrito. Taco Bell burrito dude just kept, all he wanted from me was a dang Taco Bell burrito. So what, anybody ever experienced somebody like that? They just want something from you all the time? If you're sitting next to them, don't look at them, okay? <laughs> don't, don't do that. That's, this is church, safe space. <laughs> then you're like, well, why can't I look at him if it's a safe space? No, no. But the Taco Bell burrito, he would all, like, he would hit me up just, I was like, dude, are we, can we, can you sit and talk with me? Are we, can we be friends? No, nah, man, I got my burrito, I'm good. What? I just want to be, what? And the thing is, none of us would voluntarily be like, that's the type of relationship I want to be in forever. <laughs> me and the Taco Bell burrito, dude. Let's go. You're my best friend. None of us, all of us, we're avoiding the Taco Bell burrito dude. We're like, okay, he comes out of first period on this side of campus. I'm not on that side of campus. That's us with the Taco Bell burrito dude. Aren't you thankful that when we are the Taco Bell burrito dude to Jesus, he doesn't try to avoid us? When we just come up to Jesus, Jesus, give me what I need, give me what I want, give me what I need, give me what I want, give me, 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 give me. Can you give me a Taco Bell burrito? Can you give me this? Can you give me this? Can you free me from 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 this? And there's no relationship. It's just a transaction that we want when we're called to be in relationship that transforms. Moral of the story, don't be the Taco Bell burrito dude. Don't be the Taco Bell burrito, dude. He partners with you. Next thing, he fights for you. He fights for you. And this is where it's going to get good. He fights for you. He fights for you. He fights for you. It was nearly time, verse 13, it was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. So Jesus went to Jerusalem in the temple area where he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, doves for sacrifices. He created a whip with ropes, chased them all out of the temple, drove out the sheep and cattle, uh, then going over to the people who sold the doves, get these things out of here, stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Now here's what's very interesting. It just got excessive because when people would come and they would come from all over the place, and at that time you had, you had to do a transaction, meaning a sacrifice, so that your sins can be forgiven. Mm. Jesus came and fulfilled the transaction so that our lives can be transformed in the midst of our life. Does that make sense? Like, 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 like he came so that he, he, he fulfilled the transaction. And so what was happening here is people were just, they were charging exorbitant amounts of money for uh, sacrifices. And this was actually in the Gentile area. Gentiles were those non-Jewish people that believed in God, that wanted to worship the one true God. So these are the non-Jewish people, and this is their area to come and worship. So you and I, we would be the ones going into that area. As non-Jewish people, we would be the Gentiles going into this area to worship. This was our designated space. And here's what's dope. Jesus comes in and he fights for us. 
He fights for us to have an opportunity to worship. He comes in and he cleans that thing out. And I want to tell somebody tonight, God fights for you. Jesus is fighting for you. You feel weak. You feel like you can't do it. You feel like you're on the brink of giving up. And I'm here to tell you, okay, give up, but give it up into the hands of Jesus because he fights for you. Hey, he fights for you. He fights for you to be able to come into his presence and worship. He fights for you to be free. He fights for you. He stands in the gap for us. This is our God. This is Jesus. He partners with us and he fights for us. And then we get to the end where he fills us. Here's what's crazy. Worship team, y'all could come up and give me some keys or some pretty melodious tunes. Tins, <laughs> melodious. He fights for us and he fills us. Where did the miracle, what, what did the miracle happen in? It happened in empty containers. The, ah, the miracle happened in empty containers. The miracle happened in empty, Jordan, the miracle happened in empty containers. Jesus, in the New Testament, he is the new wine. He is new wine skins. The miracle happens in empty containers. And I just want to tell somebody tonight that the Lord does his best work in empty containers. Ah. Oh. Some of <sighs> Have you felt empty? Or maybe you haven't felt empty because you're trying to fill your emptiness up with so many other things. What we see in this miracle is, and, and, I, and I love the scriptures because it says, because of the miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many began to trust in him. But Jesus didn't trust them because he knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew what was in each person's heart. I'm so blessed that we have a God who knows what's in every single one of our hearts. Every single one of our hearts, he knows. He knows. He knows what you've been trying to fill yourself up on. Some of us, it's been, I've been just trying to achieve these things and accomplish these things. And if I can accomplish this, and if I can get a good job from this group of people or from my parents or from them, if I can do that, then that will fill me up. And then you bust your butt to get it, and it still doesn't fill you. Oh, I'm here to speak to some empty containers tonight. I'm here to speak to some empty containers tonight. I'm here to speak to some empty containers that said, I needed to hear that someone will partner with me even though I'm empty. I needed to hear that someone will fight for me even though I'm empty. I needed to hear this. I needed to hear that Jesus wants to fill me and do a miracle in me and through me because here's the thing, when those containers were filled, everybody drank from it. Hey, everybody drank from it. So I'm looking at a whole lot of containers that God is going to use to bless here and beyond. Here and beyond. But where does it start? Surrender, submit, obey. 
Surrender, submit, obey. Surrender, submit, obey. So I just want to, I want to pray. Is that cool? Will you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? And I just want to pray. And if you say, you know what? Pastor D, I just, it's been a hard season. And I have been, I'm here and I'm empty. I feel empty. And if that's you here, I'm going to just ask you to do something super bold right now. If you say, I'm here and I've just been empty, and I just need to be filled, if that's you, can you do me a crazy favor? And will you just stand up right where you are? Just stand up right where you are, because I just want to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right there. Right there. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, can I just tell you, I'm already standing. If someone else gave that invitation, I would be standing. And I just want to be real and be honest and be vulnerable. Because I need Jesus. I need Jesus. You need Jesus. We need him. And he knows what's in our heart, Austin. Amen. And he wants to fill us. So if you're standing up, I just want you to do this. Just lift your hands up to heaven. And if you're sitting down, I just want you to even, you as well, just lift your hands up to heaven just like this. And we're just going to pray. We're just going to pray that the Lord would fill us up. Lord, I thank you right now for every person that's standing up in this room right now. And I just pray for a fresh feeling of your Holy Spirit inside of them a fresh anointing on their life, a fresh anointing, a fresh touch in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Will you fill them up right now? They're just declaring and saying, God, I'm empty. Lord, will you fill us? As we stand here in your presence, King, we ask that you would fill us afresh. We surrender our will, our way to you. And we ask that you would do what only you can do in us and through us. So Holy Spirit, I thank you that fear is defeated. Doubt is defeated. It's because you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but you gave us power, love, and a sound mind. So love have its perfect work. Love cast out all fear right now with the mighty name of Jesus and fill us up afresh, Lord. Fill us up afresh, Lord. And we thank you for it now. We believe it, King, and we receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And if you believe it and receive it, let me hear you say amen. 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 Let's stand up on our feet. Can we just clap it up for Jesus? Come on. And here's what I'm going to invite you to do as we get ready to worship. I, I, I want to know, I want to know who made that, who stood up and made that declaration. Because I just want to pray with you. And it's impossible for me to pray individually with everybody right now in this moment. So if you don't mind, if you did stand up, there's a connection card in the kiosk back there and a pen. Will you just fill that out and just put it on the table back there or hand it to me? Because I just want to pray with you. I want to get to know you and I want to pray with you. Amen? So let's worship together and let's keep believing God together. Let's worship, fam.